ready for another episode of Voice Breakdown? I'm your host, Bullwinkle J. Moose! Actually, I'm your host, Brendan Hodek, but we are breaking down Bullwinkle J. Moose's voice today. This is such a fun one to do, and not too difficult. I really think once you get the hang of it, you'll be doing it all the time. We're just gonna dive right in. Let's break this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. Bullwinkle's voice is on the neutral to lower pitched side. It might come across as super low pitched, but this is only due to some of the other resonance things we will talk about later. Aiming for just lower than neutral will be perfect. Another thing to note is the compression of the vocal cords. Compression means how tightly or loosely the vocal cords are coming together medially. We want some real solid compression for this voice. A good way to get a sense of this is to imagine you are doing a heave or that you are holding your breath. Then, if we let off a little bit on the pressure with this, you'll get right to that bullwinkle sweet spot. Presto! Component number two, the larynx. Generally speaking, bullwinkle will have a low larynx position. When we lower the larynx like we do during a yawn, it causes our voice to sound deeper and dopier. This can sometimes trick our ears to make us think the pitch itself has dropped, but in Bullwinkle's case, as we said before, the voice is only moderately low. The depth of the larynx will take care of the rest. That being said, there is some variability to Bullwinkle's larynx height. It is not static, but dynamic. You'll hear these quick moments of ascension and descension in his larynx height. We have seen this dynamic larynx movement in other voices, like Mario in episode 16 and Goofy in episode 21. Nice larynx, Mario! Component number three, the tongue. Bullwinkle's tongue position is unique and is very subtle. Both the front and back of the tongue will be slightly protruded or pushed forward. We have said before how the front and back of the tongue can move independently of each other. You will have the challenge of trying to control them individually with Bullwinkle's voice. While both front and back of the tongue should push forward, the back of the tongue will protrude to a greater degree than the front. The front of the tongue needs to be pushed forward just slightly enough to achieve some of the articulation aspects we will discuss in component number five. The back of the tongue can protrude much further. Hey, Rocky! Wanna see me pull a rabbit out of my hat? Component number four, the soft palate. We definitely want to lower the soft palate for Bullwinkle. When we lower the soft palate, it allows for nasal resonance. This might seem confusing at first. We often associate the word nasal with bright sounds, but this term nasal is a misnomer. That bright sound that we call nasal actually has nothing to do with nasal resonance. Confusing, I know. That is actually what we refer to as twang and is made by a narrowing of something known as the areopiglottic folds. No need to worry about what those are for today. All we need to know is that true nasal resonance just means sound going into the nose. If you make an NG sound, mm, you can feel the vibrations going through your nasal cavity. You can also check out our component focus number four episode for some exercises on how to control the soft palate and nasal resonance. For Bullwinkle, as we lower the soft palate, we get some of that nasal resonance we are looking for. What do you call a nose with no body? Nobody knows! Component number five, articulation. The main thing to note for Bullwinkle's articulation is that he has a frontal lisp. A frontal lisp means that for the sounds S and Z, Bullwinkle's tongue will be just a little farther forward, causing it to sound like a TH sound. Presto becomes prefto, for example. So listen for the S and Z sounds, and be sure to make them as THs instead. Also, he tends to pronounce the word the as the, and a uh as a. It is common for us to simplify the vowels in these words and say the and a, uh, but he will produce them purely, saying the and a. I just received a scholarship to what's the matter you, the best university around. Component number six, prosody. Bullwinkle's melodic and rhythmic patterns match his personality. He is kind and fun-loving, but extremely gullible. To reflect this, his prosody involves him having an excited sound that will pop the beginnings of words. 
his words will have a forceful burst with an upward inflection. But then, at times, he will also have a sliding pitch quality, prolonging sounds with a downward inflection. Hey, Rocky! These pitch slides can make him sound a bit dopey at times. He also is often making puns and breaking the fourth wall, which makes you think that maybe he is a little smarter than he lets on. I don't recall breaking any walls. Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. Lower your pitch and keep the vocal cords compressed. Component number two, the larynx. Lower the larynx generally, but allow for dynamic larynx movement. Component number three, the tongue. Both the front and back of tongue will be pushed forward. Component number four, the soft palate. Lower the soft palate to allow for nasal resonance. Component number five, articulation. When producing S or Z sounds, have the front of the tongue sticking out further to make a TH instead. Component number six, prosody. Make him sound fun-loving, but a bit dim -witted. Have forceful bursts with upward inflection, as well as prolongations with downward inflection. That's it! Master those six components, and you'll sound just like the moose himself. Have fun with this one. I'll let Bullwinkle close out this episode. Thank you for watching another episode of New York Speech Coaching's The Voice Breakdown. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time!